वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर द टूडे सेशन टूडे टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज अबाउट द कंजेनिटल अनोमलीज ऑफ द सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम सिंस इट इज अ वेरी वाइड एंड वास्ट टॉपिक आई एम गोइंग टू टेक दिस कंजेनिटल अनोमलीज इन टू टू पार्ट ऑफ विच द फर्स्ट पार्ट विल सी टूडे सो कमिंग टू द कंजेनिटल अनोमलीज इट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कंजेनिटल अबनॉर्मलिटी इज दी न्यूरल ट्यूब डिफेक्ट एंड द असोसिएटेड स्पाइनल कार्ड मॉल फॉर्मेशन एंड नेक्स्ट इज द एन के फ्लो सील्स एंड देन डिसऑर्डर्स ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर स्पेसिफिकेशन लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल न्यूरोनल माइग्रेशन डिसऑर्डर्स और ग्रे मैटर स्ट्रक्चर डिसऑर्डर्स और डिसऑर्डर्स ऑफ कनेक्टिविटी एंड कमिशर और ट्रैक फॉर्मेशन सो दीज आर ऑल ग्रुप इन द अंडर स्ट्रक्चर स्पेसिफिकेशन डिसऑर्डर्स एंड नेक्स्ट इस ग्रुप इज द डिसऑर्डर्स ऑफ पोस्टीरियर फोसा ब्रेन स्टेम एंड सेरिबलर लेशंस and uh, next is disorders of brain growth and size like for example microcephaly macrocephaly will come under this group and then disorders of skull growth and shape like uh, various causes like craniosynostosis hydrocephalus uh, will all come under this group so if you see in general in a, in all the congenital anomalies of uh, central nervous system they are heterogeneous in their presentation and the common presentations and clinical problems are basically you may uh, notice disorder in the head size or any abnormal shape will be there and hydrocephalus plus or minus and if you see uh, in case of fetal ultrasonographic brain abnormalities will be there at the like at the time of antenatal uh, screening and uh, neonatal encephalopathy or uh, neonatal seizures uh, will be there as a presentation and uh, definitely the child may have history of developmental delay or cognitive impairment and intellectual disability on examination in general you can see motor impairment or the child may have cerebral palsy uh, child may have hypotonia and the seizures history epilepsy or drug resistant epilepsy will be there and the cranial nerve dysfunction spinal cord dysfunction you may be able to see in general in all these uh, uh, neural tube defects encephalocele's meningomyelocele's and all the anomalies uh, the common presentation will be this only so moving on to specifically like uh, the most common congenital anomaly of central nervous system is the neural tube defect so it is the largest proportion of congenital anomalies of cns basically this neural tube defect occurs because of the failure of the closure of neural tube actually the neural tube should close spontaneously between the third and fourth week of in utero development so in case of failure to do so it results in the neural tube defects so if you see normally the rostral end of the neural tube usually closes by 23rd day and the caudal neuropore usually closed by the process of secondary neurulation by 27th day of development in case of congenital defect this may not happen so failure of closure it allows the excretion of the fetal substances like for example alpha fetoprotein or acetylcholinesterase these are all excreted into the amniotic fluid so by doing the amniotic fluid assessment these uh, fetal substances serves as a biochemical marker to a diagnosis the underlying neural tube defect so if you say in case prenatal screening of maternal serum for alpha fetoprotein in 16th to 18th week of gestation it is an effective method for identifying the pregnancy is at risk for fetuses with neural tube defects in utero itself okay so what are all the types of neural tube defects uh, many types uh, if you see the common type is spina bifida occulta and meningocele Milo meningocele, encephalocele, and encephaly, caudal regression syndrome, and various other types of neural uh, neural tube defects are dermal sinus, tethered cord, syringomyelia, diastomatomyelia, and uh, lipoma that involving the conus medullaris and phylum terminale, and uh, rare condition called encephaly. So these are all the types of the neural tube defects. So we'll uh, see one by one. in detail so it is uh, first one is the spina bifida occulta the name indicates uh, it is a common anomaly uh, consisting of a midline defect of the vertebral body uh, occulta so without protrusion of the spinal cord or the meninges 
So, most patients are asymptomatic and they also lack the neurological signs. Usually, the spina bifida occulta has uh, no consequences. So, in most of the cases, if you see, there are dermal manifestations, that is cutaneous manifestations like uh, there will be hemangioma in the area or discoloration of the skin, there may be pit or small lump, uh, there may be a dermal sinus or a hairy patch in the back. So, typically, it involves the L5 and S1 area. The simple defect, it does not have any associated spinal cord malformation. Uh, in other case, clinically more significant forms of close to spinal cord malformations are more correctly termed as occult spinal dysraphism. So, in case of evaluating this occult spinal dysraphism, MRI is the best mode of investigation. So, if you see what the where, what are the cutaneous lesions associated with the occult spinal dysraphism where the MRI is being indicated. If you see MRI is indicated if there is a subcutaneous mass or the lipoma, if you see any hairy patch in the L5-S1 region or dermal sinus or cyst or atypical dimple, that is, it is the, the dimple is very deep more than 5 mm or more than 25 mm from the anal verge and uh, vascular lesions like hemangioma or telangiectasia or any skin appendages like a skin tag or tail like appendages and any scar like lesions. So, these are all the conditions if you see in the back then definitely you have to go for the MRI to rule out the occult spinal malformation like occult spinal dysraphism. Uh, in case of hyperpigmented patch or a deviation of the gluteal fold, uh, imaging uh, may or may not be useful. And imaging is not at all required if you see any coccygeal pit or a simple dimple that is uh, less than 5 mm or less than 25 millimeters from the anal verge, imaging is generally not required. So, this is about the spina bifida occulta. And uh, next uh, another co condition is the meningocele. Meningocele is actually, it is formed when the meninges herniate through the defect in the posterior vertebral arches or the anterior sacrum. So, if you see the spinal cord is usually normal and it assumes a normal position in the spinal canal. Uh, sometimes there may be tethering of the cord, syringomalia or diastromatomalia. Uh, most meningocele, if you see, they are well covered with the skin and actually they pose no immediate threat to the patient. Uh, so, you have to do a careful neurological examination. Along with the neurological examination, uh, you should uh, uh, emphasize on doing an orthopedic and neurological examination should also be considered. Because if there is a tethered cord or diastomatomalia, sometimes there may be uh, like orthopedic involvement and urological evaluation mainly to rule out the neurogenic bladder. They are at the risk for the renal deterioration.